All right, I'll call the meeting to order at 6 o'clock. First on the agenda, are there any uh, changes? To the, uh, yes, sir. There's a, one more additional pavement cut application. Under new business. Yes, please. Great. Very good. Next on the agenda, approve the minutes of uh, April 22nd. Make a motion to approve them. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is passed. Next, community concerns. We have Ron Stancliffe with the uh, Conservation Commission to discuss the ash borer. Maybe you can give it to um, Jim and he can videotape it. Get out of it. And then give it back to him. I'll do it later. Let's okay. talk about. Are they the ones with the green ribbon? Let's talk about this report <laughs> that was been handed in to you. Uh, the interesting thing is the inventory in the back. Uh, this was conducted in 2015 and 2016 by members of the Morristown Conservation Commission and some of my friends. Uh, if you notice, the grand total is over 2,500 ash trees. Thank you. And an estimated cost of what it would be to uh, take care of these types of trees. Now this, <clears throat> I've been to several meetings to know, actually the last one was last week, Thursday, the Fish and Wildlife is being very active on this now. And <clears throat> some of Morristown is not really behind. Uh, some people haven't even made a report, some towns haven't even made a report. But uh, we have got work to do here. And I was talking to Dan last week. It's really the people that we should be talking to are our road people who drive the roads and more so water and light. The, uh, <clears throat> the reason for this and the reason that the, the state is concerned about the emerald ash borer is once the tree is infected and, more, and it dies, it very quickly becomes a hazard. And so this study, when we did this, um, review of the various, um, on the various town highways. We were, <coughs> we were estimating out to a distance of 75 feet left and right of the start line of the town highway. Now in some cases that might go a little further, but power lines are out there. <coughs> we tried to include anything that might interf interfere with, with the power lines. Now, <coughs> Some of the things that the prop dealers need to know in this is that if they want to try and save a tree, there is a treatment that can be done. But this is like $12 to $14 per inch of diameter of ash tree. So uh, most of the, these trees are going to be on private property. Mm -hmm. Uh, this town needs to adopt an ordinance, and there's been uh, recommendations. Well, not recommendations. The uh, city of Montpelier volunteered to let us have a copy of not only their ordinance but a plan. And at a meeting I attended two weeks ago locally down in Johnson, uh, they were discussing about an ordinance, and I suggested that why not have a standardized ordinance that everybody can use the same thing. So hopefully I can acquire one of these and give it to Dan that can come before the select board, but we're going to need an ordinance down the road that, that deals with uh, how we handle these ash trees. Uh, one of the shortcomings that the town has right now is there's no pre-warden 
and Dan is uh, working on that aspect of it. The other thing I noted is you're in the process of having a new road foreman, and so until that's resolved, we can't really move ahead and get the road crews more up to speed on, uh, first of all, recognizing ash trees. And then, uh, well, just make, make a note of what might be happening according to uh, the poster, how you can identify damage. I think what I would like to see is that maybe, uh, this is a suggestion that we apply a, one uh, small color of paint on the ash trees to, so we can identify them to the property owners and then talk to them about what we're going to do to resolve the situation. Now, it would be a lot cheaper to be preemptive and, and, and get out there and cut down some of these trees. And the possibility the property owner can either take them as fuel or give them away as fuel. But once, uh, right now, this ash borer is in Grand, uh, Grand Isle County. And it probably came over from New York State. We are surrounded by Canada, New Hampshire, and, and Massachusetts on the southern border. And you have seen in the news where there are other towns that have noted the, uh, this bug has come. Uh, are there any questions about this, this report? I just have a quick question. So the recommended <coughs> is tree removal is the first line of action? I would say it would be cheaper than to wait until it's infested. Uh, and the road crews and, and the Water and Light Department have the equipment for, for doing some of this stuff. And, uh, do you have a, I, see, I know you said you went on 75 feet out of the way. Do you have a sense of how many of these are actually in our right of way? No. <clears throat> okay. But that number is within the 75 feet. Right. How did you get these numbers? You went on every road and counted them. I beg your pardon? Did, did your commission go on every road and count them? Yes. And that, wow. that, That's impressive. I, I would say maybe the village of Morrisville streets ought to be revisited. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> we didn't hit that too hard. But, <clears throat> but obviously, uh, water lights need to be involved too because some of their power lines are not near the road. They're out in the boondock. So looking down the road, there's just, there just needs to be more attention brought to this subject. And, and my recommendation were, you know, let's get the water and light people more involved. And, and I tried to do that. I went and saw Craig Myoff and uh, the, the uh, <clears throat> Conservation Commission in Stowe had a uh, guest speaker who, uh, about two or three weeks ago that uh, talked about the, uh, the results of this ash war. And as a final thing, as I walk out, I gave you earlier a thank you letter from uh, the Stowe Land Trust, uh, thanking for the donation for the uh, conservation of Brownsville and Stowe. And there's been nice write-ups about that, too. And I thank you again for uh, helping in that. Thanks, Ron. Thank Are there you. any other questions for Ron? Are you going to, so you're, are you developing a policy? Or are you saying that the select board has to design a policy? I'm willing to be a consultant to help in organizing the, the uh, further furthering of what we're going to do here. And you have a time frame? We should be doing well. First of all, you need a tree board because I think there's got to be more responsibility. From them, they're going to be the PR person, somewhat. And like I said, uh, Mr. Moran is very knowledgeable, a nice person to work with. I think he would have been ideal to have been 
out there on it. That isn't it. That's a roll for me now. I'm not telling you. Oh, one. sorry. Roll. Roll. Uh, roll. Yeah, roll. Um, when I think he would have been ideal to have uh, helped in that situation, but when you have a new uh, road foreman, then I think we need to move ahead and and have we can put together an educational class. It sounds like you're going to bring us some examples, though, of, for bring Dan some examples of ordinances to entertain. Correct. Yeah. And do, do you have a time frame about? Well, we don't know if there's some infestation in this town already. You know, there's a lot of ash trees that are not bordering the road. The ones that are the real hazard are the ones near the road because they fall on the road, you interrupt transportation. And if they fall across the power lines, then you're going to lose your power. So this is why, like I said, we're maybe a little bit slower than some of the other towns as far as talking about this. Yep. But I don't know of any town in the North County yet that has the infestation, but no, it could happen there. tomorrow. <laughs> so my question, I think you just had partially answered it, because the ones in here are within the road or power lines. The ones that are out in the woods are no harm to anybody? That's not true either. They say they could be a hazard because these the way this gal explained it is that it's almost like the tree drops its big branches. So there's always that possibility someone at the wrong time, wrong place, get hit on the head. But we, at least we don't have a liability out there. But this, what we're talking about is a liability here on the part of the town and the power company to maintain our town. One of the things that we could do is, especially, you know, since we're a little bit, we go out well, once a year and we do brush cutting and road right. clearing. If we identify any ash trees during that project, we could have them taken down during that process. Well, that's why I asked about the right of way. Yeah. Because so if they're in our right of way, or, or, or if they're outside of the right of way, Yep. Then that, you know, that's a whole different problem. Yep. But even in the right of way, we still got to talk to the property owners. So. Yeah. Yep. Do you have we, more of those? Right, questions? but we have more of our. <laughs> that's the only one I'm lucky I found. I got that one. I was uh, at the meeting in Montpelier. There were other sessions. Uh, the other another session I took was an easy way to identify trees. So <laughs> uh, I got confused of ash tree versus bo uh, box elder. But uh, yeah. there is a way of telling the difference. And you can look up. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thanks. Thanks, Rob. Any other community concerns? All right, hearing none, let's move on to liquor control. I make a motion we go into the board of liquor control. Second. I have a motion and a second. And you move into liquor control. I don't think we did. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Aye. Opposed? So there's a new applicant, Mountain View Campground Corporation, uh, is applying for a second class license. What does that mean? They just want to have a cooler. From yeah, basically, it's just, they want to be able to sell it out of their store. Mm -hmm. and the of the store. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is, the outs there is outside consumption, not at the store, but well, yeah. at the campground. No, they want to be able to sell it. Any concerns? No. Yeah. Yep. Very good. I'll make a motion and we approve it. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is passed. Motion is passed. I make a motion we come out of the order of liquor control. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. I can make it easier for Erica. You just put down Brian. <laughs> Brian <laughs> Every says thing. it. I second it. <laughs> All right. Rattle looking control. Moving into uh, old business. First is uh, appoint Derek Small as full time tech one for the highway department. Yes. Um, when we hired Derek, he was actually uh, hired as a temporary full time employee. Um, 
had uh, an employee at the time that was out on medical and we felt like that he probably would not have come back and that we proved the case. So we'd like to go ahead and, and move Eric into a permanent um, status rather than the first status. In fact, his pay or his benefits, we're just moving into a permanent okay. status. And he has graciously recommended the building. Yep, I see that. I move to appoint Derek Small as a permanent full-time employee with the Highway Department, effective immediately. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion is passed. We had new business. First on the agenda, uh, Bill, adopt EMS Week Proclamation. Uh, as we uh, chat about briefly at the, the 8th and 22nd meeting, uh, EMS Week is coming up. It's a national week of recognition for emergency medical service providers. Um, and uh, our, our service is still 70% volunteer, uh, <coughs> doing 700 calls a year. Uh, so I sent a draft previously uh, yep. for a, uh, a proclamation for you to consider uh, proclaiming EMS Week at the town of Morristown uh, uh, for the uh, recognition of our staff. Do you have some um, activities planned? Uh, we've got uh, uh, some educational uh, and dining, like kind of like a lunch and learn, uh, and uh, another night where we're going to be cooking out and also having an educational session that uh, we're doing in cooperation with Coplet. Uh, we have another session that's coming up the week before uh, EMS week actually next week. Uh, it's it's the only time we could get on the schedule, but we've got some uh, uh, some out of town speakers coming in to talk about agricultural emergencies, uh, and that we're doing that in conjunction with uh, with the EMS District Four. Dan, do we have other similar sort of proclam uh, Do we have other similar proclamations? Uh, no, not really, not too often. Okay. Um, I know Eric has a, a smooth one for you to sign. Yeah. Very good. So do I have a motion? A motion we accept the EMS Proclamation Week. Proclamation. Second. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor of uh, proclaiming EMS Week as May 19th through the 25th, say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Motion is passed. Nice way to recognize the EMS. Yes, thank you. Thanks for doing that, Bill. It's great. Uh, next on the agenda, we have a pavement cut for H.A. Monash. Yes, they're actually um, putting the uh, Agway building onto the sewer line, which is good for everybody. Um, and they're, they're doing that. They have to get to the sewer line that's in Northgate Avenue. Um, the only thing I didn't have time to do is in particular was to talk to the security norm for it, but they will work with me and uh, pay for the, the cost of us doing that small patch. So um, as, with your motion to approve it, I would ask that you make that part of the motion that um, pending approval of the, the asphalt cost, but once again, they have that. Okay. And there's no real time frame on it, but we kind of want to try to stay ahead of some of the stuff. It's time for people that are starting their construction work. So I make a motion we approve this pavement cut with the stipulation. Second. I have a motion and a second for the uh, paper <coughs> cut. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion is passed. And, I just, and second, we also have a pavement cut application for Robert Hanu. What would you say the name? Uh, on Jersey Heights. Yes, this is just up above the green house on Jersey Heights. There's a little subdivision that's going on there. And yes, come really not even into the road like itself in the catch basin right on the edge of the road mm -hmm. but he will come to what cut across really was that kind of asphalt sidewalk in there and once again he's working with me because he wants to get this done and i wanted to get it done before the, the paving project starts as well so um yeah i don't know if we'll even patch that um just because it's so little and we will be paving that this summer we might put something in there just to level it up and talk about it that kind of day, and he's fine with that. So, um, but he's really not coming out into the actual travel way of the road. Okay. So. Thank you, motion. We approve it. Second. The motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion has passed. 
Next on the agenda is appoint Sean Goodell as Deputy Health Officer. Yes, Todd is still the, uh, the, 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 the health officer. Sean definitely works out well for them, uh, especially when they're inspecting their own units. Um, so he gives another good set of eyes when we're doing the inspections. So, and he's acting in this capacity now? Yes. Yep. So this is actually the use of the renewal. Renewal, yep. Make a motion we appoint Sean Goodell. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve Sean Goodell as Deputy Health Officer. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Chris. The ayes have it. Motion is passed. Uh, next on the agenda is point Maria Ward as Town Lister. Um, she was the only person that we actually had that was really interested in the job. Um, and uh, both current listers have this know with her and spoke with her, so uh, the listers have asked that it's point Maria. There's just a little stipulation in this email that where she recognizes it. Um, of course, Abby's going to be out here shortly on maternity leave. During that point in time, the three listers are going to be helping out in the office. After that, they really won't be coming in a day or two week. It will be maybe a day or two a month, probably the best. So just so everybody understands that. So. Great. Make a motion we appoint it. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second to appoint Maria Ward as town lister. Any further discussion? So from what I understand is Dwayne and Paul. Paul recommend her. Yes. Okay. Great. I know Maria. She's I think she'll be great. So. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Great. Motion is carried. Next on the agenda is uh, approve a couple of fireworks permits. First, the uh, Royal Area Cancer Network. Make a motion, we approve it. Second. The motion and a second. Any further discussion? They've been, I think, really great from all aspects. Yes. Yeah. Great. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Next on the agenda is for the Town of Morristown Fireworks. Do you have to approve our own? Nobody else will, so we have to. Okay, the village. Do I have a motion to approve the Yes. I have a motion to approve it. And a second? Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the fireworks. Permit for the Town of Morristown. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, motion is carried. Next, discuss ATVs on Silver Ridge Road. <coughs> yes, my name is Shannon Frederick, I'm Green Mountain ATV Riders and president of the club. Uh, we're looking to request, possibly, the use of the three-tenths of a mile of Silver Ridge Road to gain access to fuel and possibly lodging at sunset. It would just, we have no gas on this side of the county for the most part, and that would give us access to that. Uh, it could give us some access to possibly using Sunset's driveway as, as, a, as a beginning area for people to park and, and leave from there also. Uh, I suspect travel on it will be minimal for the most part. We don't have a huge volume of ATVs on this side. But there could be a few, you know, weekend-wise. If you saw 20, I would be surprised at this point of, of the club's size and volume. But that would give us access to fuel, and that's pretty much my only request. It would, it's about three tenths from the end of the pavement on Hyde Park End to the, to Sitco and the gas station. Oh, Sitco, you're not thinking about Max. Max, yes. So you no, it, it is Max, not uh, not the Mayfield. Not the no, Mayfield. no, we couldn't cross the river to okay. Mayfield. Oh, right. oh, okay, that makes sense. Does it? Is it? Um, like are they well lit or are they? Uh, ATVs, yes, they're, uh, as per law, they're headlights, brake lights, no okay. directionals obviously, but that's used for you know hand signals typically. Um, high park roads are open, there are a few of their paved, and it's becoming more popular everywhere, uh, more ATV use. Now, we don't prefer roads, we would just assume stay, in, stay on trails, but gaining access to, to fuel is, You've kind of got to break out somewhere and get to it. And being that behind Sunset is generally 20 acres of lawn for the most part, and the other side I don't think would 
grant us ac be able to get access to be a trail off road, be able to get there. So hopefully, if, if that was possible, that would be our only only request. Chief. Yeah, I did some research on it, and we obviously have the authority to do that. You know, pay that. It's not a lot different than snowmobiles. Give permission to travel the road or the road edge. Uh, you can cross perpendicular to the road and all that stuff. Same thing as snowmobiles. So, you know, it all falls under the statute of the authority to do that. That's what you have, so. so you would primarily be on the side of the road, not. As far as bass is concerned, typically, we try to stay, you know, if it's on a, on a slower portion of the road, we try to use the road so we're not an obstacle to somebody trying to go around or somebody trying to, to get around an ATV. <coughs> and plus, we kind of try to stay in the road so we don't burn off of, you know, if you start burning off the edge of the road, if you get enough travel, which I don't think there will be there, but it can cause erosion on the edges. You know, if you start getting off the pavement into the dirt, vice versa. So staying in lane is typically our practice. We can do, we can write, write it however you'd like, but to be dead honest with you, most people are gonna stay in the lane for the most part. I mean, High Park Ordinance was edge of the road and they've, they've changed it to the lane, using the lane for that reason. So if travel does get heavier, they're not burning their curbs off on the edge of the road and causing erosion that way. Well, first of all, I, I'm glad, uh, I think it's a great thing to have these, but I also think that we have to control them. Um, like these, the ones we're given permission to is gonna be a club, and don't they have to be registered? You have to be, you have to have a red plate registered, you have to have a VASA registration yeah. sticker yeah. also. Yeah, so I mean just no, other people can't race up and down the roads. This club, which is usually if you have a club, they're going to watch each other and take Ooh. care of each other so that Paper keeps attention. it going. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'd like to see the rail trail someday open up to. Yeah, unfortunately, you won't. I'd like to see it. That's I don't know why not. Uh, so machines go on it. That's uh, federal money that yeah. supports the rail trail, and that kind of yeah. puts a kibosh to our end of it. But at least. But anyways, I'd like to see it. I think that would be so good to be able to get on a four wheeler and go from St. John's Bury up to have a lunch and come back down. And, but a club, somebody that's watching and taking care of the trail, not yeah. tearing them up. But. You know, we try to be good stewards of, of what we're doing. Right. You know, even in the trails of the woods, you know, we follow all the practices as of any any road builder, locker, drainage, water, conservation. Right. Yep. You know, try to keep everything as clean and neat as we can. Mm -hmm. And I believe that trails built as trails in the forest are better. In some, in some senses where instead of having people that want to ride heading wherever they feel they can get to, it gives them a path, it gives them a place to go right. to keep them in some sort of order. You're always going to have a stray here and there. That's, oh, yeah. that's, that's just the nature of the beast, but I believe it's a, it's a good all around, all around thing. So how do we do this? Can we make a motion to do it or you don't have to have a special ordinance or anything? Okay. No. Now, am I correct in Morseville does not have an ATV ordinance at all, does it? That is correct. Right. <clears throat> no. Is that something we need to? I don't see a need for it. No, I think all of it is voted on, documented here, it's here covered, so. Maybe later on we may have to things yeah. get out of the hand, but, but for now sure just, just a, like, three times right. 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 I have a couple questions. Um, Thoughts around restricting of hours? Is there a current restrictions uh, on trail hours? There is a current restriction of daylight and darkness right now. Yeah, it's your highway. If, if you would like us to post something shorter than that, that's fine. We can, so date. We can post whatever you want. Obviously, people are people and they right. would probably do yeah. the thing. But. So there's a current daylight restriction on all VASA trails? Yes. Okay. Yes. And my other question, have we reached out to the residents of that road at all? No, no. Not. Um, I think my just having experience um, in a, another community with this, I think I personally feel better if we had some sort of warning to the residents so that they have the option of attending a meeting. 
that's my personal bias. Um, I think it's a great thing. I think it's for as far as the economy is concerned to bring people into the area. I think you might end up seeing that being a trailhead yeah, yeah. of sorts, but um, that's my thought. So, do, do we need any signage like they have sometimes at the snowmobile crossing? Uh, we have street signs. We have crossing signs. We 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 sign ours almost like it would any other road. You know, direction, speed, hazards. But I mean, would there be a sign on that part of that silver ridge? Uh, just travel. People that uh, shared a shared road sign, yes. Yeah, that yeah shared good. travel sign. Yeah. They're not huge. They're they're twelve by twelve, but they they're on our pole, so they kind of get people's attention. On state roads, we are using state roads more and more in the state, and they the state posts their own large what are they mm -hmm. twenty four by twenty four signs on their their pieces, but. On dirt roads and back roads, we use a 12 by 12. So you'd be putting one of those up? Oh, definitely. Definitely. That sounds good. So do you need an answer tonight or should? Uh, it's it's up to the board. Whatever. I don't need an answer tonight. I'd I feel more comfortable if we gave an opportunity to warn the, the residents so that they could. And at the next meeting, if they show up. And like I said, it's not a very big area, but yeah. it is noise. Yeah. Um, and it's so it's different than a, uh, than a vehicle. It's beneficial to be there. Everybody's happy and, and also so. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like a good idea. I so to have it at the next meet. Sure. Okay. Thanks. So we'll, Sounds good. we'll postpone that to a future meeting. Sure. Thanks, Dan. We'll like get into contact with you when yeah, it's back. Yeah, we can get contact. I'm very familiar with this. Phone number. Yeah. I have also an email address. Yeah, it's it, got an email. Yeah, you get it. All right, that sounds good. Thank you. Well, Thanks, thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda is uh, discuss bids for mowing Morristown cemeteries. Um, this was the only bid that we received, uh, and, and just so everybody understands, past years, um, the, the bid has been right around the $12,000 mark, so that's what we budgeted. So we don't have nearly enough money in our budget to cover the cost of this. Um, for, uh, for whatever reason, the, the last year's bidder did not you know, bid on this year's project, so I'm kind of out scraping right now to, to find somebody to try to know these cemeteries with, without much luck. But we simply do not have money in the budget to cover this bid. What, um, about how many hours would it take to do these? I, I really don't know. You know, it's, 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 sometimes it's hard, to, it's hard to say that because it also depends on the weather sometimes. Um, if, if the weather's bad, it takes a little bit longer. Do know, they, they, they trim around the gravestones? They, they try to, you know, um, so they trim it, they mow it. Um, they, they do a little bit of ground maintenance sometimes. You know, we'll give them fill because the, the, the lot sometimes will, will sink in over years, so mm -hmm. they'll do that. But try to limit it, you know, really to the mowing piece of it, just because it, you know, it gives them a, a good basis to bid upon that. And, Put a whole bunch of extra stuff on it. Um, and how were the bids solicited? Um, well, we sent three out to different people in the area. You know, just the, the ones that, you know, once again, to the, the past people that have done it for us, too. And then we've seen some of them posted up on people on Front Porch Forum looking for work. And so Eric has sent those to them, too. So Could we post on there that we have an open bid process? We did. We, we posted did. Okay. on Front Porch Forum a few times. So we're postponing this. We're postponing yeah. this. Very good. So once again, I'm still out looking, trying to find somebody to do it. My concern right now is, of course, if it ever decides to warm up, the grass <laughs> is really going to grow fast. And right now, our, my to. yard is just about ready. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm about right now, about so that's that's a, a concern. But, um, we have a great Twitter account. I tried to talk to Anna. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to do the writing, not the pushing. Yeah. <laughs> and there, there was some disagreement on that. <laughs> All right, very good. So we'll circle back on that in a future meeting. Um, next on the agenda, discuss renaming Harrington Street. Um, previously, the um, 911 coordinator had kind of required Harrington Street. And Harrington Street's off of Bridge Street, where the three apartment buildings are going up. Yep. And, and really, after review, um, that really doesn't need to be named. 
we can just name the number of the apartment buildings in it and make sure the first responders can find that. And we've already done that. So really what we're asking you to do is unnamed Harrington Street. There's really not a reason to have it named. Um, and the 911 board was fine with that too. Um, so just a little bit of a different opinion. You know, okay. Practices where it really needed to be named. And I think this is the third go around. Yes. So <laughs> it really doesn't need to be named. <laughs> Um, and it makes more sense as long as it's clearly marked so that when we have first responders, you know, getting to the buildings, they can find the right building and that's what we want. So, and they are, we work with the, the property and make sure that they're named. So um, by process, the select board named it. By process, the select board needs to remove the name. Okay, do I have a motion to remove the name of Harrington Street? I'll so. make a motion to remove the name Harrington Street. I'll second it. A motion and a second to, I guess, delete Harrington Street and revert back to Bridge Street. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion is carried. Right. Do I have a motion to approve the warrant? So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Yeah, let's have it. TA report. Sure, just a few things on um, the paving. Um, we'll start hopefully this week, Thursday, on the Coffin Road. So, um, once again, this new little know, dependent that's, that's what was the you know, phone call today. So, the highway is pretty great for them, all streets are prep. Um, the downtown paving, you know, I know is moving forward. Um, I, I think the important thing, especially for you know, the newspaper, um, they already have their public process. So, uh, we, we in America, we're kind of already in contact with them. So if people or businesses are going to wonder what the schedule is going to be, we would probably be putting that out on front porch form. Usually those things come in on Fridays and then they're on the Friday evening thing. We'll be putting it on our, our Facebook page. But those schedules of what's going to be coming on for the next week will be out there as, as much as we can in the public. So that's really where I want people to go to see that or, you know, push comes show they can always call. But you know, the ACA transportation, they do do a great job lately of getting out the word. Um, and front porch form here is really, really a popular format for that. So people are looking for that schedule and want to know what's going on. Um, Fridays usually when those updates come out, once again, it'll also be on our Facebook page. So that's where people need to go to find out what's going on. I don't have a start date yet, um, but I know it's coming. because There's, there's lots of movement on what's going on around us with that. Um, the highway form job, and you know, we've got that posted, so if anybody knows of anybody that wants to apply, please put the word out for us. Um, working on that. And then um, I did a rough draft of social media policy. Um, and you can see some things I highlighted, you know, blocked or you know, um, bold some things that I put in and some things that, you know, I felt like maybe the, the select board may want to be in there. So it's really a starting point for discussion and something for you to review. I think more appropriately is, is really look at um, the VLCT guidance too about what do you want to accomplish in the yep. select board policy and what are you trying to accomplish. A lot of it talks about um, public input back on these forms too and what's respectful replies and what's you know, not respectful replies. And so there's a real danger there too of, how do you do that and still not limit somebody's free speech? I mean, right. Just because they don't necessarily like the action of the select board doesn't necessarily mean that you can delete their post. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. and you know, <laughs> there's, you know, there's a, a lot of discussion about um, who's actually authorized to do that and, and who can delete those posts if somebody puts something up there and some guidance on that. So it's, it's a pretty interesting read for a policy and a guidance. But once again, you know, take a look at, the LCT does a great job, I think, of giving town some guidance. So, so think about what you're trying to accomplish. Um, and once again, this really applies to right now, I think, to our Facebook page um, and our, our Twitter account that, that we have active. So, um, and just some other things I, I think are handy there. But once again, I just put this together um, filled in some of the blank spots. I left some of the, the spots kind of empty because I think I need more direction from the board as a whole on, on what you want this to do before I start putting ideas in your heads. 
So, um, so everything that's awesome. in bold is what you've had. Is what I've added in. And you've added, added in. I added okay. in, you know, or I filled something. And, you know, like the town and the Morris Valley didn't, you know, because it's your policy. But, um, just, once again, it's a starting point. I think it's not something that we, you know, that I'm looking for you to approve tonight, but to, to <coughs> what you want this policy to do and what you want it to accomplish. Great, thank you so much. I think it's important. So, uh, that's really all I have. I mean, uh, we did go over to the noise house today. The, the work over there is going great. It's on schedule, under budget, so I don't see any problems with that. Um, you know, they're doing a great job. Tommy Blake is the right person that knows how to do that. Um, Trish and I went down to make sure we had the, uh, the Oxford bathrooms Side of the road, we wanted to decide just to make sure that we weren't going to interfere with any of the utilities down there because there is a waterway that goes down through there. Um, and then once I get the state permit back from that, we'll be setting up a pre bid meeting to, to meet on site and get that process started. So those things are all moving along. I've noticed a really, really uptick in the last week of people coming in for, thankfully, so that, you know, that they know that we're going to be working and paving. And they're getting their work done now. The village, in particular, Good. got a couple of clogged sewer lines that they fix and some service lines. So once they start paving, people will, you know, say, "Yeah, we know you're going to pave, and we want to get the work done now rather than later." So there's been a real uptick in that in this past week with people coming in for, for that kind of stuff. So things are, are starting to warm up and we're moving along now. So when they start paving in the in the town here, are mm -hmm. they going to be doing it at night? Parts of it. So everything I think if we find what we wanted done at night, I think it was going to be from at night it was going to be from Randolph Road down to the uh, the, the Memorial Park, and I think coming through the village to Bridge Street. All that work will be done at night. Okay. Um, the other areas will be done during the day. You know, we tried to differentiate what's between the business district really being done at night mm -hmm. and then the residential areas being done during the day. Um, well, with the with the paving, well, I know it's going to be on front porch form and et cetera, Facebook. Will we have the ability to maybe just put like on our main landing page or something where we could direct people to? Mm -hmm. Is that easy to do or not really? Of at least this. Yeah, like on our website? Yeah, yeah, just directing folks there that don't necessarily have, I mean, have. Like to get on Pleasant Street, you mean? It's, like, just like exactly what Dan is talking about. Yeah. This is the nighttime, this is a rough schedule. Right. I mean, yeah. we don't have those details yet, but right. oh, yeah. somewhat of the plan. Yeah, and they're, they, they actually, Agency of Transportation actually contracts out their public affairs piece of that now. And the last projects that they've done in this area, they've been great. They so they just kind of hand it to you? They kind of hand it to us. Okay. And then, That's you know, they tell you what's going to be going on and where to expect traffic delays and when to expect traffic delays. It might just be nice to be on our, I think on our actual website. Another board, sir. Yeah, they'll, the, the agency of transportation loves to spend money on stuff like that. So there'll be signs <laughs> up all over the place. You know, that is what they do. So, um, but they won't do that until they have a contract right. in place, and there'll be those those kinds of notices. That Paving begins, out. whatever. Yep. So, um, once again, it's a big project, but you know, they I think they've done a good job of coordinating with us to do it. So, um, it's great that the, the contractors out there know it's coming, and they're they're fixing these little things out so that they don't have to come back. And, well, they have to cut the asphalt after we do it, for sure. But they're doing the best work. So is water and light. You know they. If they know of any service lines right now that they need to fix, they've started doing that work. So that's the reason why you've seen on Bridge Street last week. You know, and across the street over here, they had a service line to fix. They, they really have to get on the street. So everybody's kind of started to do that for us now that the weather has broken a little bit so that we don't have to worry about doing that later. Even, you know, having somebody out working in the right of way while they're trying to pave would be a disaster. So it's, it's great that everybody's recognized that and, and they're getting it done now. So. Are they taking the, the road surface down? Yes, they're, they're grinding <coughs> two inches off from, um, throughout the whole, all of class one highway. So they're, they're, they're milling that two inches off. And probably some spots, they'll probably have to mill a little bit more of that just so they can get down to one level surface to come back up. So, um, and then the, the, the plan is to overlay um, two inches of new asphalt across the whole thing. And they'll adjust all the structures, so all the manholes, 
and all the sidewalks, you know, where there's, there's handicap crossings, all that will be adjusted. Once again, they're putting in the, uh, the crossing over by the senior center. So all those things will be done by contract by them. So um, it's, it's a big project and there's, there's no way that it's not going to impact us, but it, you know, it's a long, long overdue. So, um, is, what about down uh, Arkey Miles down to um, Oxbow? That's a town road, not a class one highway. Um, so you know, that's not part of this project. Is that is anything going to be done to that anytime I soon? I think they're going to pave down there. Okay. Arkey Miles, probably on the other side of the railroad tracks because the, there's, there's not a lot of them out right there anymore. Right. So there really wasn't before. And in hindsight, it's probably a good thing that we didn't do anything with that because they would have just tore it up during construction. So. So do you know if that's in a pipeline for the road department? For us, no, I think RP Miles is going to pay that. They're going to do it down yeah. to the Oxbow? Yeah. Okay. Never done go all the way down. The, the right of way actually narrows up quite a bit going okay. down. So, um, but they're going to do that. We kind of have not paid the entrance to the Oxbow because... Speed. Speeders. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it is a big problem down there. <laughs> we, we went down and graded it off today. Okay. Good. Um, okay. So, um, but... Yeah, for a while we've tried to put some type of speed bump because we have had a problem with people speeding down there. Um, so it's the, a little bit of bump is okay, but not the big bad. No, like it's pretty bad. It's yeah. pretty bad this morning. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so you know, there, there are a lot of moving pieces right now to the paving projects that are going on. Um, um, and then the noise house, but like I said, they're doing a great job over there. And, and once again, it's a, it's a historical match. To the the, re, the point that's there, so once it dries and cures, it'll, it'll look like the historical point into the okay. museum. So, okay. Any other questions for Dan? No. Nope. Very good. Select board concerns. I had already brought up to Dan about um, there was a spillage of some sort on Randolph Road uh, back in the fall, I think. And right now, since the snow's gone, it doesn't look good, and it's right near. Um, little crick that's there. I don't know what that's called. So he's going to look into it. Very good. Anything else? No. I just was going to bring up crosswalks, which we're not going to do paint them until after. The state's going to paint all the stuff for us. Oh, they're going to? Yeah, they do all the paint. No. <coughs> yeah, I, I think, you know, I, I don't want to spend the money to go right. paint something that's going to get bound so up in a couple of weeks yep. to the month anyway. No. Yeah. And I'm all set. <coughs> Any other business? All right. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion. Meeting adjourned.